So All right, my friends, so we are starting a new series here in the channel dedicated to the playing of Charlie Parker, his style, his lines, which actually is a style that transcends into many other musical styles, such as the Brazilian style of music or even the classical, where this all came from. The bebop language or the language of Charlie Parker is nothing but classical counterpoint applied to the swing rhythm and many times in double time. But it's just counterpoint rules, meaning upper neighbors, lower neighbors, approaching target tones, arpeggios, and etc. So let's look into it. The first phrase of this series, and this is something new in the channel, I'm going to start bringing you the tablature here on the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to take the key of F, and here is the first phrase that we're going to look at. <laughs> Maybe a little faster to sound a little bit more bebopish. So, so what's going on in this phrase? Basically, all the phrases in this series are going to be dedicated to major chords. So the chord tones are one, three, and five. All the notes are always approached or encapsulated by upper and lower neighbor. The lower neighbor is always chromatic or what we call leading tone. There can be a leading tone to every chord note. So leading tone is half step below each of these notes. And then why is it important to know the scale? Is because the upper neighbor is always from the scale. So it's your next scale tone. So upper neighbor of one is two. Upper neighbor of three is four. Upper neighbor of five is six. So let's look at the phrase right here. It starts with a leading tone to the one and followed by the arpeggio. So we have. And then here, we're going to go all the way up to the seventh. And then we're going to do a sixth degree encapsulation. Why are we encapsulating the sixth degree? Because in a major chord, the sixth is almost like a chord tone that is so welcome, it is so pleasant, that uh, many times it is treated as a chord tone. You can encapsulate it like it is a target tone. So when I say target tone, same thing as chord tone. So here's the sound of the sixth being encapsulated. And obviously, just melodically, it calls for a one after this one. Uh, so that's, you're beginning to understand the language of bebop right there. It's very important if you want to learn this, to not only learn the solos from the masters, but break them up and analyze them. So here's the beginning of the phrase. Right? Notice here, I'm doing a legato. This is slide down. Why am I doing that? Because you don't want to play every single note. You don't want to pick every single note. Otherwise, it kind of sounds like a machine. You want to sort of humanize or make it more, a little bit more horn-like, you know, where they can have some more slurs and the, the playing can be more smooth. So you want to alternate some pick notes and some uh, slid notes, if I may say that. So here we go. The, the continuation of the phrase is one going down to the five one seven six flat six five this is what uh, Barry Harris one of the greatest jazz educators would call the bebop scale going down and you're putting that chromatic note between the six and the five so that all the chord tones may get the downbeats one six five three one right but that's not the phrase the phrase just goes down here right and then here is what I call three-point encapsulation. I'm going to aim for the third, but I'm going to start all the way down from the seventh, and I'm going to stack thirds. And this actually ends up arpeggiating a dominant chord, like a C dominant chord. You have third, fifth, and seventh of C dominant. And we're doing this just to create tension for the resolution, right? And in the middle of these, um, among these notes here, you can tell that the target note is right in between this and this note. Note. So I could call it a lower and an upper neighbor falling down to the chord tone. So here is the phrase up to this point. Right? Uh, now, this phrase is uh, actually inspired in a classic phrase by Charlie Parker, which is in the break of the solo um, in one of the recordings of uh, the Night in Tunisia tune. Now, originally, I believe the phrase will go like this. Yeah, but I've changed it a little bit, still following the same uh, thinking of Charlie Parker to this. Uh. So 
I'm encapsulating the one here. So I go, that's the resolution to the third. And then now I'm aiming at the one and I'm gonna do a chromatic encapsulation. That's nine flat nine or two flat two, seven one. So here's the phrase up to this point. And now I'm simply gonna arpeggiate the rest of the chord. One, three, five, seven. Okay, so. And then up to this point. And now encapsulation of the one. An encapsulation may be a variety of ways. You could do it like this. Or, 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 right? There's or. There's many ways, but the thinking is the same. And then, finally, and then uh, finally, when I finish encapsulating uh, this tonic, I simply arpeggiate the following notes. So tonic third and fifth, and that's the end of the phrase. So one more time. So once you analyze this, you can see that the downbeat, when you tap your foot strategically, you're almost every time getting the chord tone together with that downbeat. So I have. A few times I, get, I may get the ninth, or sometimes what we call the late resolution, like in the beginning. I start on the seven one. And then you begin to understand that you don't always have to nail the downbeat on the chord tone, but sometimes there is. Um, the, the delayed resolution or an early resolution. Both are fine. As long as you resolve the line, it's always going to work. So actually that rule makes it even easier for you. But as we go further and analyze the next uh, phrases, you're going to understand it better and better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be explaining five phrases in this series. And this is the first one. I hope you enjoyed and stick around for more. See you guys.